Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, welcome to next episode here on Up Close. And today we are very pleased to share more about Ustaz Saiful Rahman. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thanks for joining us today. Okay. So Saiful Rahman, just a quick question. Mm. Uh, curious. Um, what is your hobby like on the side? No. Do you do any hobbies? Uh, now. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, my hobby I live. A little bit of a sedentary lifestyle. <laughs> uh, I like to read, mm-hmm. uh, watch movies, <laughs> essentially read and think a little bit more than when I was younger. Ah. Yeah. So besides that, do you do like any other things like sports? Or? Ah. So when I was younger, I used to do a lot of sports. When I was in high school, I was in the school swimming team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was also playing tennis and squash um, and then as I grew older in college I was doing uh, 2.4 uh, that running thing mm. uh, but in my adult years I picked up MMA MMA? Uh, yeah <laughs> I was doing jiu-jitsu kickboxing and, and boxing and my strength is actually kickboxing wow uh, I can't imagine you <laughs> um, having that skill set to, to yeah, you, we need you, to be strong you, you learn it to you know I remember you then is it because of US you travelled to US or yeah so yeah. so the history to this is uh, I thought before I moved to the US for my studies I wanted to make sure that I can defend myself just in case you know anything happens you know you, you watch movies and you see things happening mm-hmm. especially someone who's brown you know in a white country so I I went to the gym, got an instructor who was um, uh, a fighter, uh, really took to competition and all that. So I pick up these sports. Uh, eventually, I do this about five to six days a week. Wow. And I actually went for competitions with it. Wow. Yeah. And do you win most of the competition or what? Uh, I didn't go into much competition though, actually, uh-huh. because it was just like for fun. Um, but. For uh, most, for the statistics, uh, yeah. I've been about 70%. Wow, that's good. Uh. <laughs> yeah. I won't want to fight you. <laughs> but, but not in Singapore, uh, like overseas, like in Thailand, because it's jiu-jitsu, uh, it's boxing, and so they're more, um, more well-received there. Okay, yeah. so given that you're also a religious teacher, right, I'm curious, yeah. like, how far is this skill set in to an extent mm. of Islam, you know. Yeah. So I think I think it's important because as a well-rounded Muslim, you need to have a holistic lifestyle, not just to stay at home and just perform ibadah. You see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to like archery, um, you know, horse riding, swimming. So this gives you an indication that there are physical activities that's involved, and also you must take into account that when people are comparing their lifestyles, like they were fighting in Badar, Uhud and all these battles and they were always on guard whereas we are living in an aircon room you know yeah. working from behind desks so we are really quite sedentary uh, so we need a lot more physical activities in order to keep ourselves uh, healthy and more fit oh, mashallah. a fit Muslim will be able to wake up for Tahajjud and be perform oh, the prayers yeah, yeah. Oh, I never yeah. of it that way but now you say about that I'm more encouraged now yes to, you should to, to you do should. more exercise and yeah. sports as well yeah so nowadays um, uh, I usually take a stroll evening stroll maybe after Isha or, or after Maghrib to the beach uh, I live near the beach so mm-hmm. after dinner or whatever take a stroll so that you know all the food will be digested and then uh, get fresh air you know uh, open up your mind when you see things you know? so it's kind of nice 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 yeah. and also when I was young I forgot to tell you that I was a musician Okay. I was at the Singapore Youth Orchestra. I was playing the flute there, but I play the piano, the saxophone, and the clarinet as well. Oh, speaking of music, right? Mm. I heard like people said that it is haram. Is it? Yeah, people who don't do anything will always say everything is haram. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you see the Olympics, like if you win, they idolize you. If you lose, they just condemn you. So you, you just ignore these things. And so the point is, just like music or athletics mm-hmm. or exercise, mm-hmm. as long as on the face of it it's not something that is outrightly expressly haram you can do it and as long number two importantly you are able to manage between your, your sports for example or your music with your ibadah mm-hmm. you know don't do it to the extent that you do, do sports so much that you don't pray mm. or you play music so much that you don't pray you must be able to balance this or you this. do videos too much and you don't play pray video is just a few <laughs> minutes <laughs> so no excuse <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. so uh, you said you played the flute right so yeah. is that like a choice of music instrument that you like, you chose, or your dad gave you this idea? <laughs> no, actually, my late dad uh, taught me the piano, right? So I was flown to the piano first. Um, I actually 
got all the way to grade eight. You know, I finished and all that. And then I was in high school. I joined the band, and so initially I, I was given instruments like the horn, the baritone, percussion even. Mm. Uh, and then I requested for something else, so they gave me uh, the clarinet. Mm -hmm. But then being a boy and I was in a military band, so I thought I need to march, I need to get the lightest instrument. So I taught myself how to play the flute. Oh. And eventually, through the flute, I got a scholarship to study with the Singapore Symphony Orchestra. Wow. And then when you go marching, I become more lazy, I choose to, to play the piccolo, the smallest okay. one, wow. <laughs> and the lightest one, so I can, you know, survive longer. <laughs> but that means you can read musical scores very well also, because you can use uh, it. If you yeah, I, I, I finished grade 8. Yeah, so all wow, the way, that's the, the last kind of test. Wow, yeah. powerful. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Inshallah, yeah. we can hear you play a new instrument one day. Uh, one day, inshallah, yes. <laughs> You've heard me play it before. Yes. <laughs> I only played the guitar. That's the only instrument that I, uh, my okay. dad taught me. You know. But that's one thing that I cannot play. I don't know why. I should be able to yeah. play that. Show sendiri, you know, play the guitar, but I can't. Go <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, then, okay. So, I'm curious now, like, why, why would you like to do all these videos with us, you know? Is there mm. like a reason for doing it? What inspired you to do it? I think one thing is, uh, I think there's a lack of, uh, in our region, there's a lack of uh, uh, Islamic instructions in proper English. Okay. Right? Usually, even if it's in English, it's always translated from Malay. So, it doesn't make sense to an English-speaking person. So, I thought that that component of the Islamic studies is, is lacking. Uh, we don't have enough of us to do this. Number two, uh, I, I, I really feel close with the converts because as you know, I'm the registrar of conversion in Singapore, so I convert people all the time. And so I see them and then after a while, I thought that eh, they have nowhere else to go. So, and then since you're doing this and I, I wanted to give you my support uh, and, you know, and uh, it's not only localized to a certain country or a certain region, but, you know, as you can see, our viewers are from all over the world. So, it's, it could be a source where we can galvanize all the Muslims together under the banner of Allah, of Islam, right? And so, so, it's also as, as a form of support. Like, and I like what you guys are doing. It's a good da'wah and I thought, why not? Thank you. And also, just like you, to leave a legacy behind. Oh. Like maybe down the road when I'm on my sick bed or that bed, what have I done in my life? And you know, when I look at these videos, like, mashallah, okay, at least I've done something good. If not a lot, but at least a bit. Yeah. Inshallah. Mashallah, we are in line with this. Uh, I, I thought also as well. Legacy yeah. Behind. yeah. Um, so, in terms of the pandemic, <coughs> has it impacted you also in terms of the pandemic? Uh, generally, <laughs> Unlike the kind of persona that you, you've seen me, I'm actually a very introverted person. I don't really go out very much. Uh, I don't hang out. Uh, so in terms of that social gathering aspect, I'm not really impacted so much. But uh, I used to be in a traveling business and that business is not able to carry through because of this, uh, of this pandemic situation all over the world and the borders are being closed. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in a way, it has impacted me in my lifestyle mm. and my work has changed. But in, in many ways, I think it can be churned out to be something positive. Awesome. Yeah. So what's your advice to people you know, who are like, going mm. through this like, pandemic? This so <clears throat> a lot of people um, are suffering during this period, um, uh, you know, economically, you know, their jobs and all that. Uh, that, that I can't help. Um, mm. But a lot of us are, are going through some mental pressures and emotional issues because, because they're cooked up at home. Um, I know that lifestyles have changed a little bit, but you don't have to fall victims to, to, to this kind of new uh, models of, of, of life. Right? So instead, you know that you have to stay at home most of the time. So rather than doing nothing and lament about why you cannot travel or you cannot go out and all that, so increase your ibadah. Increase your zikr, increase your Quran, your studying of whatever you need to study because Zoom classes are all available, you, know, you don't have to step out of the house nowadays. So increase that component, increase your intimacy with Allah because you cannot go out anyway, anywhere. So make your days productive mm -hmm. even though you're inside. So it will keep you away from being sad or being moody. Marshall. Yeah. So um, why should anybody listen to you on, in our video? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to listen to me, <laughs> but if you if you do listen to me and if you want to listen to me, Alhamdulillah, may Allah increase both yours and my um, knowledge in Islam, in our path towards God, and so Inshallah, Allah blesses it, and then you know it'll be a smoother journey for us to reach Him. Mm -hmm. um, 
if you find there are better alternatives out there that you can relate to, then by all means go ahead uh, because searching knowledge is not uh, limited to people, right? Uh, so, but if you do participate in our activities, you'll see that we have constructed a two-year syllabus. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our topics are actually incremental in its approach from a very small thing to a worldview thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can see the progression, inshallah, if you do, if you do follow us in our Shah Herald Night Life. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we are coming to the end of this episode. Mm -hmm. I just want to share one inspiring message you have for everyone here on the TV now watching. Wow, oh, okay, so number one, I think what is most important is that you don't give up. No matter what your condition is, everybody is going through some form of tribulation and challenge in life, but the mark of a person of faith is he always gets up whenever he falls. And uh, always take the positive out of a negative situation. Like for example, during the pandemic, we all like cook up at home. Mm -hmm. So if you're cooked up at home, then what do you do? in the alternative. So be prepared to always change and adapt. Um, thirdly, whatever you do, always strive to acquire peace with Allah and with yourself. And whatever you do, we in line that make sure that the Prophet Sallallahu will be pleased with us and will be proud of us, inshallah. Inshallah. Mashallah, what an inspiring message you have for us, uh, Saifur Rahman. Inshallah. So I hope today you guys have enjoyed the episode. Saifur Rahman share a bit about his backstory, and yep. uh, we hope to see more of you know other things that he has to share with us. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in tonight, and inshallah we'll see you in the next episode. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Meet Saifur Rahman. Hey, my name is Saifur Rahman, and I'm the alchemist. Saifur Rahman was an international Fulbright scholar of law and religious studies, specializing in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Previously, he was from the Faculty of Law and obtained his LLB honors from the National University of Singapore. My training has opened up my mind about the world and other belief systems. He was a managing partner and practicing lawyer of a law firm and was a court manager of the Sharia Court of Singapore. My legal background enabled me to process my experiences practically, holistically, and logically. He was also a talented musician and an avid martial arts proponent. He loves writing, traveling, and inspiring people. Today, not only does he host classes and seminars, he takes his students on heritage tours across the world. Through traveling, I hope to impart practical rather than theoretical knowledge, life lessons, and develop personal spirituality. Beyond the classroom setting, traveling also opens up minds to contextualize what students learn and gives them realistic perspectives. Hence, the importance of holistic travel with a difference. Saifur Rahman is well respected by many and over the years, many were inspired by the beauty of Islam through him. In fact, many have embraced Islam through his guidance. Saifur Rahman has changed and inspired the lives of many. While he has helped open up minds for those who have followed him, he now hopes to inspire you. Oops, more than one minute. That's our story. See you next week.